Welcome to Carbonize This. Today we're carbonizing history. A viewer told us when Mount Vesuvius erupted in 79 AD, it actually carbonized loaves of bread in a bakery in Pompeii. Almost 1800 years later in 1862, archeologists found these loaves of bread still intact in the bakery ovens. We're gonna to try to create replicas of these historic artifacts. We have two loaves of Roman bread called Panis Quadratus. We're gonna carbonize the baked loaf and a raw loaf to see if they turn out differently. Let's load them in the carbonizer. We're gonna load the cooked loaf in the bottom. Next, we'll load the raw loaf in the top. Then we're gonna seal up the barrel. We'll just load some wood between the two barrels. Now I'll put the chimney on. Now this isn't a volcano, but it mimics the conditions that were found in Pompeii. When those pyroclastic flows came down from Mount Vesuvius, they were about 400 to 900 degrees Fahrenheit. They covered the bakery and the ovens with ash, creating a low oxygen environment. Well, that's our exact setup here. That inner barrel that sealed low oxygen environment, the wood that we've lit, high heat, 400 to 900 degrees Fahrenheit, we'll let it run for several hours. It's gonna carbonize the bread in here, just like it did in Pompeii. So in the morning, we'll check things out once it's cooled down. It's completely cooled down. Let's see how the bread turned out. Now remember the bread that was not baked, that was just that raw dough is on top. So that's what we're gonna see first. Oh, very cool. But looks like it looks like some rain got in here. It rains uh, since we did the experiment and we've got a lot of water sitting here on top. One detail right here we didn't mention previously is we actually stamped the bread, which was uh, commonly done in, in Rome for uh, tax purposes and also to identify the bakery. But we've got a little bit of, uh, of the bread flaking off here on the side, but it stayed pretty much intact. You can see the string right here that we tied. Now we'll get the uh, cooked loaf out. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Looks very similar. Now this is the cooked loaf and you can see a little bit of the stamp right here, but you see there a lot more of it flaked and broke off. Still feels, uh, feels pretty heavy. I don't know if it carbonized completely. So here's the finished loaf. It was too hard to break open. So we actually used the Sawzall to cut it. And you can see it barely carbonized here on the edge. Since this didn't carbonize completely, we doubt the raw dough loaf did. It had a lot of water it had to drive off before it would carbonize. We're gonna run these both through the carbonizer again, but we're also gonna create another loaf. Our loaves are a lot taller than what we see in the museum. We're gonna change up the recipe and how we made it to get a flatter loaf. Maybe it'll carbonize better and it'll definitely look a lot more like the museum pieces. This kiln was built by Ben at Holler Homestead. It gives us a little bit more control. We've got a larger firebox that we can keep feeding and let it burn longer, or the smaller retort, once you set it, that's it. You can't add more wood. So we'll go make the other loaf and then we'll let you guys see the results. We did it. We were able to make a loaf that looks a lot more like the bread that was found in Pompeii. So you can see it didn't rise as much as our previous loaves and it's got the same detail as that Roman bread. It's got the sections here and then it's got our little stamp, CT for carbonize this. And then the groove here created by the string. We're gonna get a weight before and after carbonization. So let's get a pre-carbonization weight. Looks like it's 1,216 grams. Remember, we've got the loaf that was baked before we carbonized it in the back and we cut that one in half. And then this loaf right here is the one that was raw dough when we carbonized it. Our goal with this run is to get those first two loaves to carbonize completely since they didn't the first time. And now we're gonna load the loaf we just made. So with this third loaf, it's a lot thinner and it's probably gonna carbonize completely through. We'll find out here in a minute. Time to seal it up. Not quite Mount Vesuvius, but it'll do for now. It's the next morning, time to check it out. Okay, I had to loosen the lid. Let's see how it looks. Oh, wow, it looks great. I'm gonna grab the loaf that we cut in half. Oh, 
So this is the first loaf that we uh, baked. It's very fragile, just kind of flaking off. I'm gonna pick it up and see if, yeah, it's carbonized completely now. There's the string. Yep, very brittle. So the string survived two rounds of carbonization, but what's interesting is the museum pieces don't show the string. And I'm not sure why. Maybe they didn't bake it with the string on it. Uh, that's a possibility. I, I doubt they would have taken it off of the artifact. So I'll have to research that later. We're gonna grab the raw loaf that's still whole. This one's also been carbonized twice. So the string on this one also remained intact. And we just used a uh, baker's twine. So it is very fragile. It, it's already just kind of fallen apart right here. It's likely carbonized completely through. So let's kind of crack it open here. Yeah, yeah, it's completely carbonized. So it kind of came off in two layers. Here's the outside, yeah, it's very fragile. Here's the stamp right here, that's CT for carbonize this. So moment of truth, did we recreate the artifact visually and did it carbonize completely through? Let's find out. Well, that definitely looks a whole lot more like the museum pieces. We even got the center kind of sunk in. And if you look at the museum uh, artifacts, the same thing happened to those. When we carbonize items, they tend to shrink and they become much lighter. So we're gonna move it to the plate and do a before and after comparison on how much it shrank. And then we're gonna weigh it and see how much lighter it is. Let's get a weight on the loaf. We're at 400 even. So let's look at this in a little more detail. You can see the string that was carbonized. It's gonna snap nicely, I know. Yeah, there we go. Overall, we mentioned the crack, but it's not too fragile that it's breaking in half. Let's flip it over and look at the bottom. Oh, yeah, there's the bottom. Got kind of a crack right here, but other than that, it's uh, pretty intact. Now these indentations were either made by a string or a reed that was placed across the bread. Now, Panis quadratus is the name of this bread. And when you think of quad, it's usually four, but we've got eight slices. So then where does the number four come from? Well, it comes from how they made the indentations. So one, two, three, four. And panis meaning bread, panis quadratus. Now in the museums, they're not gonna go and break these open to find out if they're carbonized. But since we made this, um, we can do that. Before we break this open, we're actually gonna pull the string off and we wanna compare this indentation on the side to what we see in the museums. You know, I don't, in the museum ones, I don't remember seeing the texture on the string like that. So I'm, I'm really curious as to how they make that indentation on the side. Since this one's a lot heavier than the other loaf, I'm thinking it's not carbonized completely, but let's find out. I hate to break it though, it's so pretty. All right, it's breaking naturally kind of on that slice. No, it is. So I, I wonder though, I'm trying to look. So it cracked and more things would off gas and more heat would get in. So this inside of there, I don't know if it's carbonized. Let me see if I can break that. No, it is, it's carbonized completely. I'm actually a little surprised. Hmm. Now this is gonna be carbonized completely, isn't that? But I'm, I wonder about in here. So with the crack there, gases got in and out, or heat got in and gases got out. What about inside of here? Oh, there we go, we broke this one off. No, it's carbonized completely, so we were successful. So definitely the thinner loaf uh, carbonized a lot easier. And our bigger retort gets a lot hotter for a lot longer. Let's save these. Let's save these three. 
Okay, it looks so pretty. I actually want to put this back together. See if we can preserve it. This would make a fun little science puzzle. Carbonized bread from Pompeii. That's not too bad. And then this broke off of this side right here. A lot of viewers ask us what these items taste like after we carbonize them. And, and I tried it in our cookie video and you can watch that here. But today, even though I don't want to do this, I'm going to do it for history. Okay, it's got a completely neutral taste, but it's like chewing on a rock, so I'll pass. We had a lot of fun trying to create replicas of the bread that was found in Pompeii. And we actually have more videos planned. Now, this was a viewer suggestion, and we love viewer suggestions, so please keep them coming. Also, like and subscribe for more content. We'll see you later.